Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to use your cedar beading kit to make a pair of hoops. First, let's show you what comes in this kit. So you can see right here, the beads are provided by his bead store. They're located in Saskatoon. I've actually been there before. I love it. Go check it out if you're there. And here is the instruction booklet. Here you can find some details on what comes in the kit. So we're getting 10 colors of size 10 beads, needle and thread, booklet, and some patterns. And then you'll see here are some instructions showing you how to do single needle, which I'll show you in a future video as well. Next in our kit are our needle and thread. So you can see right here we have it looks like a size 10 gold eye needle and some size B Nymo thread. These are perfect so we can bead anything we want with this kit. And here is our thread and this is a nice size spool. You'll get lots and lots of use out of it. And the next thing that we'll find in our bead kit are some patterns as well as one that is prepped and ready to start beading. So we have them right here. We have some flowers and a butterfly pattern and then a nice simple flower that's already prepped with some felt that you can start beading on. Stay tuned for my next video and I'll show you how to do that. So lastly we have our beads. So we have 10 different colors of size 10 beads which are a pretty standard traditional size and we have them in a bunch of different colors as you can see here and they also have some different finishes we can see most of them are opaque and some of them are transparent what you'll need to do for this video is pick out uh, a couple colors that you like I chose purple, transparent pink, and transparent clear beads to do my earrings. We all get different colors, so pick your three favorite. Then I'm gonna take this pair of hoops I have and we are going to upcycle them for this video. This pair is very large. If possible, use a smaller hoop, like a two or three inch. Now I'm just gonna take my beads and I like to put mine in these little containers. They're basically like little lids that screw on and I like them to hold my beads. I just find it the easiest. You can also use a piece of felt or fabric like a scarf to hold all your beads uh, like a beading mat. It's totally up to you. This is how I like to do it. Then we're going to get our needle ready. So just pull it out of the little felt holder. Grab your thread. I'm going to grab about five or six feet, depending on the size of your hoop. If it's smaller, you can grab like three or four feet. I'm going to trim the end so it's pointy and it's going to be a little bit easier for me to thread. And then we're going to thread the needle. Pull the thread and fold it all in half. Now grab one of your hoops so we can get started. Using your needle, you're going to grab one bead and that is how we will get started. So I'm just popping it into the container, getting my little bead on there. And then I'm gonna push the bead down to the end of the thread. Be careful not to push it all the way off and leave yourself like a four to six inch tail on the end like this, and I'm just gonna hold it up close to my hoop, like so. And then I'm gonna take my needle and twist it around the hoop like this, so it's creating a loop around the hoop. So when we go up through that bead, it creates a circle that is attaching it to that hoop. Like this, so this is what it should be looking like. This bead isn't gonna be super stable, but that's okay, we're gonna do another one. So again, I'm putting my needle under the hoop, creating a loop. It doesn't matter which direction you do as long as you get that thread wrapped around the hoop and then up through your bead. As you see, when I pull it, it's gonna land nice and flat. Now, if things start to get messed up, that's okay. Just use your needle to pull that tail thread out of the way. We wanna make sure to leave that tail on there the whole time. And make sure yours is a little bit longer than mine. Mine was hard to work with. Leave, like I said, four to six inches. There you go. See, now you can see that it's starting to take form. So we're gonna do it again. One bead, loop it around the hoop. I'm just holding it between my fingers for a little extra help. And then put your needle up through the bead. Like that, and pull nice and tight, and push it next to the other ones. There you go. And as you go, you'll find that it's a little bit more secure. And just keep on going. So you can make your own decision with how you wanna do it. You can cover the whole hoop in beads. You can cover just the bottom half in beads. I'm gonna do roughly three quarters of the hoop. I'm not gonna do the whole thing because this hoop is so massive. This has taken me a long time. Again, it'll be much faster with a smaller pair. So I'm just gonna keep on working my way around like so. So as you can see, I'm doing three quarters, two thirds roughly and leaving the top unbeaded. Now to start our second row. 
we're gonna grab two beads. We always grab extra when we start a new row doing brick stitch, which is what we're doing. And I'm gonna show you how this brick stitch comes alive. So push those two beads down to the base and I'm just gonna push them out of the way with my needle. So you can see here the loops between the beads. We're gonna go through the second loop. Two beads, second loop, just like that. And pull tight. This is gonna anchor us down onto that base row. There we go. And then I'm gonna put my needle through the bead on the left side. Like so the one on the inside. There we go. And now they have secured. Now we can go one bead at a time. So we're gonna put our needle underneath the next loop, pull tight, and then up through the bead. We only go through the second loop when we get started. From here on, we're gonna go through the first loop. Just like this, bead, loop, underneath, and up the bead. Just like we did with the hoop, but this time anchoring to the thread, not the hoop. Very, very simple. Just keep repeating this process all the way around one more time and once we get to the end of course our tail thread is going to be a little bit loose so i pinch it between my fingers on my left hand that's holding the hoop your right hand if you're left-handed whatever it is and then you're going to go ahead and finish with those last couple beads but yeah holding it with your hands is going to make it a lot easier for you and as you see i can go under and then up through the bead and our second row is all done like that now for our third row i'm going to grab the crystal beads the clear ones and we are going to take three of them for this one i'm just going to do a flourishy stitch just to kind of accent the earrings so i'm going to hold that tail thread in my non-dominant hand and then i'm going to push my needle down through the third bead so you can see i went up through the first bead added these three transparent and then went down through the third bead and don't worry if anything comes loose you can easily fix it and then we're going to go up through the fourth bead right there and repeat that process i like to do this to add kind of like a little decorative scallop to the edge of our beadwork so then again we're going to repeat that i'm going to go down through the third bead with my three transparent beads just like that and you can see it's starting to create kind of a little scallop effect and we're just going to keep on doing that until we get to the end of this row now of course you can have as much fun with this design as you want you can do multiple rows if you want i'm doing mine very simple because my earrings are already quite big but if you're working with a smaller pair you can do way more rows of brick stitch before you add this flourish if you want or you can just do brick stitch and skip the flourish this is kind of your opportunity to play. Now that you know all these basics, you'll be able to create some really fun ideas and have as much fun as you want and create anything you want. That's the fun thing about beads. All you need is a needle and thread and a little creativity. Okay, and here we are at the end. So finally, to finish everything up, we're going to weave our thread through the beads to create a knotting effect without tying a knot. So as you see, I'm just weaving it down to a purple bead, up the next purple bead, and then we'll go through some of these pink beads. Basically, we want to create a kind of zigzag that's going to anchor the thread so that it can't pull through. So I'm just going to weave back and forth. Like so you'll want to go up and down, backwards, forwards, until your thread is really nice and secure and it is not going to fall apart once we trim off the excess. So you can see how much I did here, and that'll give you a good idea of what you need. You can also test it by pulling your needle and see if it affects the beadwork. You should be able to put it through without it causing any major shifts in your beadwork. And once you're all done, you can trim off the excess, and then I am going to burn the edge for an extra little bit of security. So you'll see I'm melting the thread and what it does is it creates a dull edge so that it won't pull through. Now repeat this on the other side with your tail thread. Now mine is a little bit short so I did have to kind of put my needle in and then thread it and pull like I did here and I had to repeat that process. If you had a longer tail like I recommended, um, you wouldn't have to be threading it all the time. It would be the exact same as doing the other side. And once it's secure, we are going to trim and burn the edge. And there you go. Here's our finished beaded hoop. What do you guys think? I really hope you like this video and found this tutorial easy to work with. 
but don't worry, there are more tutorials coming using this bead kit. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to show you how to do flat stitch. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. And have a beautiful day.